If you talk to Fred, the chief mortician, I'm sure he'll be able to help you. He's usually a no-nonsense type of guy. We always try to help each other out. Which reminds me, he owes me some lab equipment. Too bad. I could really use that right now. Yeah! I know that newspaper! The department buys it in bulk as a cheap alternative to paper towels. You exit the alleyway. You take the subway to the morgue. There are too many loose ends and not enough tight answers. A murdered police officer and Nick's death. Where's the connection? They were both slashed brutally. That can't be a coincidence. Shootings might be commonplace around here, but having a body checkered with claw marks is definitely the work of an individual. And a sick one at that. Nick and this officer, um, I think her name was Rizzo, might be in a position of power, but what about the other victims? One was a community college student, and the other was a desk clerk for a fishing company. Not exactly frontrunners for a terrorist group, but then why else would they be killed? Unless they were bystanders who got in the way when he set out to kill Nick and Rizzo. But how could that be? They were killed several days before Nick. Just doesn't make sense. Well, maybe the chief mortician can fill in some blanks. You look and see the gate clanking against its tightly wrapped lock. With each push of the wind, the gate tries to break free. Flickering gas lamps are fastened everywhere, shining on every horrible niche carved by a questionable architect. The building stretches a full seven stories into the air, and it's still cloaked in shadow from the surrounding buildings. Colorful excrement mixes together like a Jackson Pollock masterpiece. The mortuary doors stand before you, awaiting to be opened. As if you opened a tomb, flat, dry air escapes the mortuary and disperses into the atmosphere. You enter the silent building. A sickly yellow stains the wall. Cleaning fluid a la carte, there is a diary resting on top. A long dead tree stands limp before you, at the tip of one of the branches. A patch of green fights the cancerous brown that has been spreading across the sapling. Dried out, withered sea plants lay forgotten amongst the wreckage of cracked fish skeletons. All that remains is an old abandoned sea castle that has been hollowed out with time. The desk is cluttered with junk while the trash can remains empty. The crimson pillars form the key points in a trapezoid. Perhaps the architect used some form of logic amidst his deco-ridden madness. Need a lift? The depressing atmosphere in this room does. You press the button only to discover it's out of order. The janitor barely pays you any attention. He is grumbling to himself about how much work he has to do. He's totally incoherent. The diary appears to be quite worn from constantly being written in.
you exit the morgue. You submerge your hand into thick, bubbling, pasty gunk. A half-eaten banana squirms and oozes between the cracks in your fingers. You finally find a picture of a young woman. A young woman's face is hidden behind the sticky gum. You remove as much gum as you can and then you carefully place the photo in your wallet. If Darwin was a photographer, this would have been his snapshot of the missing link. As if you opened a tomb, flat, dry air escapes the mortuary and disperses into the atmosphere. You enter the silent building. It seems you've gotten his attention. Thanks. I've been looking for this for weeks. Please allow me to help you. I'll get fried. A vacuum cleaner stands by the wall. These pillars, like most of the other ones in the morgue, are painted deep red. The lights are too concentrated. Instead of illuminating the hall, they only succeed in forming ringed spots on the walls and rugs. Standing before you are brown doors of thick wood. They're the kind of doors that can lead to anything. There's something about the ceiling that strikes you as queer. You keep staring, but still can't quite figure out what's wrong. The extinguisher stands at attention, awaiting its chance to smother any potential fires. This door leads to the mortician's office. A plump man stands by his office door. Ah, you must be Federal Agent Sykes. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. How may I help you? Certainly. I am here to be of service. I see you're a very perceptive man, Mr. Sykes. We found traces of blue crystals on some of the bodies. No, these bodies were not slashed. They were decayed. I wasn't sure what the particles were, so I sent them down to the forensic lab for analysis. You must know that I have received five bodies this week related to this killer. I'm in a very serious business, and I'm telling you, this is as serious as it gets. She was so cut up, I felt that putting her in a regular locker room wouldn't be right. She's on floor seven. That's our special floor. Now if you have any further questions, I'll be happy to answer them. If not, I'll be happy to take you upstairs. A very respectable department. I'm proud to be working with them. He's a very hard worker. In fact, he's working on the blue dust analysis even as we speak. 